learning some small ins and outs can really make a difference in your long-term productivity in Flutter. That is why we're going to go over 10 tips and tricks that I found. And if you like this kind of videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video. Make sure to also hit the notification bell and let's get started. So for tip number one, which can be quite controversial, is using a lot of packages. Now the reason this is the first tip is that most of the times you want to get a early MVP or a version out of the app as quick as possible. Now in my opinion, it's more worth having an app out quickly so you can refine compared to the user feedback, instead of wasting a lot of time for development that may not be needed. So for example, if you want to have a search bar in your app, why not grab a package for it in the beginning and later on, if you want to add your own implementation of it, you can do that instead. Now, of course, just to reiterate, when you have the full application fully done, maybe you want to reduce the packages that you have in your app. Now, going over to tip number two, which is utilize snippets. So if you find yourself doing something very often, you can configure snippets for it. So in visual code, you can just hit F1 and search for snippets and you can create a new global snippets file. Or if you already have one, you can add some more snippets to it. For me, I have three snippets that I used almost all the time, which is the different test snippets. And fundamentally snippets is not hard to create. You define a body and a prefix and you define how the code will be laid out. So make sure to try it out. It will really help in the long term. Now coming up with the third tip, we have use linting early. So I will demonstrate what linting is and we will do that by just using a package. I will just pick lint for this one. And we can see here how we can actually implement it. So first we go by just adding the dev dependency for the lint package and later on we will include that analysis options file. So moving over to our project, we will navigate to the root of the application and create a new file. This will be the analysis options file. And inside here, we want to add our package later. So let's go ahead and add our package in our pubspec YAML file. Here we just take the lint of version one. That is the version of as of now. So if you have a newer version, just pick that. So now moving back to our analysis options YAML file, we can go ahead and include that file coming from the package. This will give you a set of rules for your Flutter application. So for example, if we navigate to main.dart, we can see a underscore at the homepage or a warning. And we can see that in the problems tab in visual code, and we can see that it says prefer const with constant constructors. So as our constructor on the homepage is constant, we can go ahead and add the const modifier. This is just a small one. And if you have a very big application, you will probably see a lot of the different problems. So I recommend doing this early. Going over to tip number four, we have used the tooling. Now you probably already noticed that I used the tooling in the last tip, but the tooling can be very beneficial in a lot of different scenarios. So I will just start by nesting a couple of containers. And after a while, when I'm done with that, I will go ahead and extract that into a separate widget. And here you have all of the different tooling options. And just by using that little tooling tip, we are going over to tip number five, and that is using multiple private widgets. So as you remembered, we extracted a widget now what we will actually do is use to prefix that with a underscore and calling it to something that makes sense. Now what we just did by extracting that widget is that we reduced nesting for quite a lot. And we can also see that we now have a container which we probably don't need and we can use the tooling to remove that one. And as help of the linting system, we can see that we have a const constructor, meaning we add the const keyword. And down here, we can see some linting problems again, which just states that we shouldn't use empty containers. So for this case, we will just replace that with some sized boxes. Now, of course, that's pretty much the same thing, but this is just to illustrate a point. 
Now moving over to tip number six, we're going to take a look at how we can generate the app icon and splash screen, making it a lot easier than doing it manually. So to do that, we have two different packages. We have the Flutter Launcher icons, and this one will help us generate the different icons that we will have for Android and iOS. And I promise you, this one will save you so much time that you will not be able to do it without this the next time. Now, Flutter Native Splash is another package, which I actually found out by a tweet made from Bo Blail over at Twitter. And this will make it as well super easy to create those splash screens, which is native for your application. So if you found this tip valuable, I recommend going over to his Twitter and following him. He has a bunch of different tweets that are great tips, and I will link that in the description. So moving over to tip number seven, which is Nullaware operators. Now there are a bunch of different Nullaware operators. I will just go over two of them. But you can probably just search for that one and you will find a list of the different Nullaware operators. So for simplicity's sake, I will just create a method and will define a new variable and make it null. Now, if we would have null safety, we will get warning when we try to return name here as the string is not nullable. And the solution to that, as well as this code, is that if we have the name to be null, we can use a nullable operator with double question marks. And that will mean that if the first value is null, then the second value will be the one that's going to be used. So having null here, the sum default name will always be returned. So of course, if we replace the null value there with the name variable instead, this method will now return the name if it's not null, and then return the string if it is null. Another case, if you have a variable, and if it is null, you want to assign it to a different value. You can use double question mark equals, and you will assign to a new string or a new value if that name variable is null. So in this case, it will always assign to that specific value. But these are just two different ones, and I will try to link some kind of blog down in the description where you can read more about these different operators. Now for tip number eight, we have reuse X of context. So in Flutter, you have probably seen the inherited widget of theme. And to illustrate this, we will just create a new widget, and I will just call it a lot of themes. So let's say you would have a column with a bunch of different texts and all of these texts would need the same kind of theming. So in this case, we will have a text with the text hello and we will have the same style for all of those texts, which is the body text one. Now we have two problems with this code. The first one being that it's very annoying to write all of this code and it's very repetitive. And right now we're actually doing seven inherited widget calls for the body text one. So we can both optimize this and also make this more simpler by just defining a variable at the top of the build method. In this case, we'll just call it text theme and then just assign it to the theme of text theme. Now you can just replace that in all of those styles and just say text theme dot body text one. And of course you can simplify it even more by specifying the body text one and just defining the variable to be body text one. My approach is usually just define the text theme and then using that with dot body text one in this case. Now moving over to the second last tip, which is tip nine, which is utilizing the debug print. Now in some cases, let's say you have a method which is just a network request. And in this method you do some kind of request to a HTTP server and you get a response object back. Now I will just add some comments just to make this more clear. And we are going to do some kind of fetching in here and we'll get a response object back. Now what you can do is just print that object and you will get that in the console. But sometimes you want to have some additional information and when you want to do that, you can utilize the debug print. And this one will actually provide even more metadata about the response 
and it also requires a string, so you would have to use to string or a equivalence. And now for the last one, moving over to tip number 10, and we have the single responsibility widgets. Now you don't have to be familiar with the solid principles, of course it would help, but I will try to explain this as simple as possible. So right now I'm just renaming everything to keep consistent with all of the tips, and we will now create a new widget. Now what I mean with single responsibility widgets is that we are going to define widgets for specific tasks and they will not do anything else. They will in sense have one single responsibility. So in this case we will have a custom text widget which responsibility is to display a text with a custom style. Now what this will actually do for us is that we actually have a very much simpler implementation and we can make sure that this implementation is really good. So for example, instead of just having custom text, we will have custom headline text. Now the main purpose of this widget is just to display a text which is of headline one. Now we can make this even better by utilizing a constructor and a variable and passing in a new headline. And now used to be consistent with our previous tips as we're not using this file or this class in any different file, we're just going to make this private. Now, as we are trying to keep with single responsibility, we know that we can improve this one even further. So as we are not using null safety yet, in this case, we could be able to pass a null value to this headline and then the text would result in an error. So what we're going to do is first adding the at required. This means that we have to pass a value to the headline when we're using the widget. But the problem is still that we can pass a null, so we're going to use an assert for that. Now don't feel demotivated because you don't know about assert or something like that. We can learn about all of these things by going into the SDK of Flutter. So in this case, as we are implementing the text widget, we can check the text widget and see how they handle null values. So if we go ahead and control click the text widget, we are going to navigate and see how the implementation looks of that widget. And scrolling down a bit, we can already see that they have a data is not equals null, and they also have a text for that one. So we're going to go ahead and copy that text and add it to our widget as well. This will also make it easier when null safety comes and we want to implement null safety into our applications. And just to make sure, if you're watching this in the future and null safety is already in, you won't need this specific assert, as well as the at required will not exist. So you can go ahead and remove the assert line as well as the at sign, and you will have the specific implementation for null safety. But as we are not there yet, we will just go with the typical implementation of at required and a assert.